A few days ago, I made a video in which I compared side-by-side -side 10 different stable diffusion models. Now, my testing methodology was slightly flawed in the fact that I didn't change any of the settings between generations with different models. So every single one used the same number of inference steps, the same guidance scale, everything else. And what ended up happening is, as some of you pointed out in the comments, and you were absolutely spot on, it gave an unfair disadvantage to some of the different models. So what I did is I spent the weekend going through every single one of those 10 models, trying to find the best settings for each, which I've now uploaded to Pixel Dojo, and I'm gonna take you through right now. To start out is we're gonna fire up pixeldojo.ai. We're gonna go over to the AI image creator. You can check this out for yourself. There's a free trial. Otherwise, it's $5 a month. That's right, $5 a month have lowered the pricing, so you can jump in and do unlimited image creations at a really ultra low price. Now, the AI image creator has a number of different models loaded up. As you can see here, we've got Proteus V2, SSD1B, Playground V2. We're gonna go through every single one of these. The other thing is, if you click on the Advanced tab, you'll see that there are a number of different settings, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. The first one is Steps. Now, if you're familiar with Stable Diffusion and how it works, it's basically a way to take noise out of an image and steer it towards creating something that's in your prompt, represented by your prompt. The number of times that it iterates through this neural network and removes noise from the image is related to the inference steps or steps. And if you're using automatic 1111 or focus, it might be called steps or inference steps, but it's essentially the same thing. So you can see here that you can adjust the steps anywhere from one to 100 and it's not always higher is better. There does become a threshold where adding more steps just increases the amount of time that it takes to generate an image, but it doesn't actually get you any better result. Now the second piece to that noise step or that removing noise from the images is the scheduler. The scheduler, and you've probably seen some of these mentioned before, is Euler or Keras, DDIM. This is the algorithm that's used to remove the noise from the image. And so by changing the scheduler, you can actually influence the way that the image is created, the way that the noise is removed from the image, and therefore the style of the image at the end. And some schedulers work much better than others for different models. So it is very much model specific. And then the third and final piece that we're gonna talk about at least today is the guidance scale. Guidance scale or CFG scale, depending on the software you're using, is how closely the final image adheres to the prompt. And by what I mean is, if you started out with a CFG or a guidance scale of zero, you're essentially creating a random image. It's not gonna pay attention or follow your prompt at all. A very low CFG or guidance scale is going to be more creative. It's gonna have less adherence to the prompt. It's gonna follow the words in your prompt a little bit less. Now, as you go higher in the CFG scale, you're gonna get more precision, but you're gonna lose some of that creativity but the other thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get some artifacting. And let's show you a couple examples of what I mean. A good example is Juggernaut XL version nine. Now, if we go with a CFG scale or a guidance scale of say seven, which is what I would typically use for the earlier models of Juggernaut, and we load up, let's say we'll go with our red haired woman. We'll use that for our prompt. And let's generate an image for that. And you'll notice that the result looks way over baked. You can see a lot of artifacts. And this is exactly what I pointed out the last time we did this video. You can see around the eyes, it looks really odd. The mouth has some artifacting and the skin just looks way too glossy and unrealistic. So this is with a guidance scale that would typically be okay for one of the earlier Juggernaut models. In fact, let's try this same one in Juggernaut version eight. And we'll keep that CFG scale at seven, same setting. But when we click generate, we're gonna get a much different image. And here's that same guidance scale or CFG scale applied to Juggernaut V7. Now, if you look at this photo, it looks much more realistic, smooth skin, nice lighting. It doesn't look overbaked and artifact like that other one. And that's the difference between these models. Some models need a higher CFG scale. Some of them need a lower CFG scale. And most of them will tell you right on the model card which one they need. But it's also something you can do a little bit of trial and error with. Going back to Juggernaut V9, we're not going to change anything else, but you'll notice that by default when I select V9, it sets the guidance scale to 1. Now normally this would be very low and it wouldn't adhere to your prompt very well, but in the case of Juggernaut XL V9, it will adhere to the prompt still, 
but it's also going to get rid of that overbaked artifact look. And here's what I mean. Now we get back a much more realistic, a much better representation of what this model can do. And it's all just by changing that CFG or that guidance scale down a little bit lower. So then let's test out each one of these models and just see what they can do. We'll go here and we'll grab this prompt, this uh, kind of woman with the cat ears down here. And that's gonna fill in the prompt. And you'll notice it's actually in Spanish, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll go through Proteus V2. And you'll notice again, every time you select one of these models, it's gonna change the scheduler, the steps, and the guidance scale. So for Proteus V2, I found that Euler and guidance scale of seven and steps 30 seems to produce the best results. Get that two really nice images out of this. Now you can see that it's not overbaked. There's no artifacting. You've got this uh, nice looking skin, you've got nice looking hair, everything's really sharp and in focus. And I found that if I used lower number of inference steps that it was a lot blurrier than this. So this seems to be kind of the best place for this model. The next up is SSD-1B. This is an interesting model because it has 50% fewer parameters, so 50% less data than SDXL but it was still based on XDSL. That means it generates images really quickly, so 60-ish percent faster. So you can go with a reasonable number of steps, like 20, to get sort of a little bit better image quality. And the guidance scale, you can crank up pretty high. In this case, I went with 13. Now, it doesn't give as high a quality results as SDXL. It still has that sort of soft look to it. It's not very refined. But cranking up the guidance scale and cranking up the steps even further didn't seem to make much of a difference there. This is a good model if you're in a hurry and you just want to test something out, but I find the others to have much higher quality. Now, what if we took this and we threw it into the upscaler? Let's have a look at that. What we'll do is we'll just copy over the exact same prompt and a negative prompt, upload our file, and then we'll go ahead and upscale. This not only sharpens and adds more realism and detail to the image, but it also doubles the resolution to 2048 by 2048. So you can see here quite a big difference. And by playing around with the settings, you can get something even better. Now, you'll notice down in the, the scarf area around her neck, and even in the hair, how much extra detail gets added to this even around the cat ears. So this is a good way to use one of those really fast models to get sort of a baseline image and then upscale it and enhance it a little bit if you want to. Moving on, we'll check out Playground V2. For Playground V2, I found that lower guidance scales, around two seemed to be kind of the sweet spot, and then around 30 inference steps. That produces these sort of soft, well-lit images that are really quite nice, I think. You'll notice she has sort of cat ears made out of her hair, some other details in here, but overall I'd say it's a really nice image. SDXL didn't really change much here. I went with the Euler for the scheduler. We went with guidance scale of seven and then 30 steps. This is sort of the default settings that I had used for all of the images in the previous generation video. And here's the result produced. You'll notice it's still kind of soft. So again, this is one of those where I would probably take the image and I'd run it through my upscaler just to get a little more detail and refinement to it but otherwise not too bad, really soft lighting, natural looking skin and such. For Juggernaut V8, it likes the same settings as SDXL, which makes sense. It was built upon and trained on SDXL and just sort of fine tuned from there. But in my opinion, the images that come back look much better. They look like they have a lot more detail to them. They're not quite as soft as the SDXL images. And so overall, I like the look of Juggernaut quite a bit more. Building upon that is Juggernaut V9. This one, they completely changed a lot of things, and so it likes Euler Ancestral as the scheduler. It likes a lower guidance scale of one, really low guidance scale, and then still the 30 steps. But man, look at the quality of the images you get back from Juggernaut V9, even compared to V8 or SDXL. I think it's a really big step up in realism and lighting. It's just, it's a nice looking image. While they are more aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion at least, you'll notice that when you zoom in on them, you do get a little bit of not really artifacting, but the skin looks like the pores are very symmetrical, something that's not really realistic. So there are some trade-offs between these different models, of course. And Imagine is another one that likes a really high guidance scale. So this time it's up at 12, and then the steps, the number of times that it iterates through the neural network, I've cranked up to 50, and you get a lot more of that kind of crisp look to the image, a lot less noise in it. And if you're looking for those really high quality anime images, you really can't go wrong with Animagine. It was trained on thousands of anime images. 
to get back some really cool results. Kandinsky is up next, and it liked a completely different scheduler, Keras DPM, a guidance scale that's on the lower end of things at 4, and a higher number of inference steps at 50. That was the only way I could get sort of the more of the noise out of the images. This model has a really different aesthetic from a lot of the others, but it comes back with some really cool results. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit different with some more stylized lighting and such, this is a really good one to check out. Realism in the eyes is really nice. The skin texture looks fantastic. And then you get this really awesome lighting. RealViz XL version 4 is next up. I actually updated this. It was version 2 in the last video. So this one likes K Euler Ancestral. Low guidance scale of 4. And I've even gone lower than that. And then 30 inference steps. And here's the results from RealViz XL. You'll notice that it comes back with real nice soft lighting. Real natural look to it. If you're doing some sort of portrait photography or creating images of people, this is a really good model to check out. Finally, that leaves us with Dream Shaper XL Turbo. Now, being a turbo model, you can typically get away with very few inference steps, but I noticed that anything lower than 10, at least for me, came back with really grainy, noisy images. I have a guidance scale of two, so it's still on the very low end, and these typically turbo models generate images very quickly. And you can see that for being such a quick model, it still returns really high detail quality images. So we'll take a look at a couple of these. And even zooming in, you don't really see any artifacting or any abnormalities to it. Now, if you look really closely, you can see some sort of red dots in there. You might be able to get away with having a few more inference steps to get rid of that. It might also be the scheduler in this particular case as well. But overall, not a bad quality image for such a quick render. Hopefully you found that useful and found it to be a much better representation of what these models are capable of. If you want to check them out, go over to pixeldojo.ai. I also have links in the description to every single model so you can download and install them on your own PC if you've got Automatic 1111, Focus, or any other stable diffusion software. Let me know which one you thought looked the best down in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm Brian Lovett, and remember, all your tech are belong to us. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town, breaking down AI, wearing the crown, from basics to complex, never let you down, all your tech AI, earning the renown.